how to build an opening repertoire. This is a common question, especially among players uh, who are not experienced, who doesn't have a high rating. So this uh, video is specifically aimed at players with below 1500. Um, so uh, the rest of you can just <laughs> switch it off right now and let's get on to it. Um, we are we are trying to to look at how to build an opening repertoire with white based on one e4. Uh, this is uh, the, the most common move, especially uh, among uh, new players. And with this move, white takes a stake in the center, uh, which is in general what you should do. The aim of the opening is to gain ground, get your pieces out. Uh, you say that space and development are very important and of course avoiding weaknesses uh, is also a thing. Uh, and we're going to look at uh, two different uh, approaches to this. One wild one where uh, white is, is, is trying to get uh, an attack going against uh, black uh, different uh, options and one um, more uh, solid systemic uh, where black white takes it rather slow and and try and, and fianchetto as it called his bishop a lot so let's get into the wild one first um, after e4 the most common move uh, until it used to be the sicilian but i think at the moment the, the most common move is e5 and I recommend uh, that you play the here, of course, black has the option of playing the Petrov or the D6 or the Elephant Gambit or Latvian Gambit. You all, we will not look at that. Uh, you will just have to, to, to find something yourself. And we, we're not going to, in general, we, this is just how to think about it. And here I would recommend for a, aggressive players to play Bishop C4. And against this is the Italian. I would think that the Evans Gambit is a good choice. Now, why uh, do I, in general, I don't, I'm not a big favor of Gambits, but I think if you play to learn uh, to attack and learn to understand the, the uh, advantages in development, I think Gambits are very good tools. Uh, this is the best way to learn these things is, is simply by sacrificing some material and get the, the pieces rolling. Uh, the, the problem is if you play these gambits and you have some success with this, then you may not be able to go back and learn to play what some grandmasters masters would call real chess, uh, where pos positional maneuvering, like uh, the Carlson does, uh, is is the the name of the game. So so I think in in some stages of your, of your repertoire, uh, your game of your development as a player, you should play wild openings, but you should also be able to go back. And the problem is most people when they learn something. I'm not saying they get lazy, but it's so easy to just continue playing this, the same gambits. Or uh, if people start out with the French, they, they play the French forever and, and so on. So this is a sort of, a, I hope that you don't take this as something you should play for the rest of your life, but something to try out. After this, the most common move is like this, and uh, White will play uh, this move. Then he will go on to, to play something like, castle um oops and uh, and queen b3 and get an attack and he's lost a pawn and he might even sacrifice one more but he has a clear de lead in development and much more space and this is definitely not easy for black to play you can find a lot of uh, videos uh, on youtube about the events gambit and also there are articles everywhere and uh, there are of course also books and and so on um, so but I, I think this is a good opening another choice here is if black goes um, uh, with this move which is is also interesting um, i think uh, you can play d4. Uh, this is um, this is interesting. And here I would recommend you play uh, knight g5. And that's it's really a weird opening, uh, but it's not so easy um, for 
for black to to play this and uh, and you can look into this uh, how how to play knight, i think the main line is knight e5 queen takes d4 and it gets very messy very quickly and if black is not prepared uh, white will just sweep him off the board uh, this is uh, the wild repertoire against e4 e5 it's just some random suggestions uh, you should find your own way but it's more or less how to think about this fits well with the Evans Gambit, it's wild, it's not very well explored, and, and black will probably not be very well prepared. Okay, let's step back. E4. Um, that's of course also the French. And uh, what to do about that? Uh, this is a difficult opening for a lot of white players because it leads to rather close positions. Um, one idea is of course to, to here just say, I don't care. And just take it and uh, and play something like this and play the exchange variation and 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 try to get your pieces out. This is if you don't like uh, the structure after e4 uh, e5. Uh, this is how to play um, with white and it's not a bad it's not a bad choice at all. Uh, you'll have to look at it though. But I, th I think we I would recommend e5 uh, getting space. And if white black is not uh, careful, white will get an attack on the green's king side. Uh, the, the most common move is something like this. Uh, and here, white is at the moment, he could play a gambit with bishop d3. And I would recommend if you really like to attack, you do that. Instead, bishop e2 is also fine. Um, and, and at the moment, white is scoring pretty well with this line. You have to to guard your pawns and you have to be ready to transform these positions into an attack uh, uh, with sacrifice material. So this was uh, the French an idea against that opening. Uh, then we have uh, the Sicilian. What to do about the Sicilian? Well, in general, in these uh, li openings, we're, you could play knight f3 and d4, and that would be my recommended choice uh, when you have sort of gotten a little bit more rating, are ready to play uh, with, with uh, more theory to study some openings. But if you don't want to study openings, then knight f3 followed by d4, this move, and d4 is not a good option because it, it leads to a ton of theory. There is really a lot of theory. So instead I would say just go knight c3. Um, and uh, and blacks can play d6 and ic6, but regardless of what he does, you go f4. Um, and this is uh, this is, a, is 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 pretty good opening. You just play your your knight here. You get your bishop out and your castle, and you try to attack the king. Uh, one line could be something like this. Um, and here going here is is probably a, a better square than the c4 because on c4 you run into something like uh, this which could be a bit annoying and here black is actually at has to be a little bit careful because if he does uh, if you choose a normal move for instance knight f6 you go e5 so that the best move for black is probably something like this and then white can castle or you can move the bishop it's it's fine either way um but if black for instance goes something like this, then this move is actually good uh, because white will just set up a normal, um, and here he will do something like this. Get the king into the corner, put the queen here, put the queen here, and play f5 and get a good attack. And black has a bad structure in general in this uh, situation. And this bishop is not worth much. So this is uh, the so-called Grand Prix attack. It's I think black will score reasonably well. White will score reasonably well with this in um, up till a certain level. Uh, I think at grandmaster level, it's they they know what they are doing, so it's not so easy to get an advantage with this kind of variation. Even though players like Gawain Jones uh, still uh, likes to play these. This, uh, he, he would probably like this repertoire uh, for um, um, we are building here. So this was the Sicilian. Then then we come to another problem, uh, and that is the Caro can. Uh, this is very popular at the top level, and also if you go into the main lines, there's a lot of theory. Here I think I would just recommend that you go F3. This is known as the fantasy variation, and in general, you're hoping that white will black will take on e4, and you will uh, be able to get an attack on the f file. Um, 
something like uh, this. This move is, is, by the way, interesting. You have to be very careful. There is a nasty check here, so you just have to look uh, the other way and find. And I think I think this is is the main line. And here, uh, for instance, if he, he doesn't do if you do it like this, oh, all right. Um, White is already attacking down on f7. Look at this square here. Um, so this is is an interesting opening, and uh, and I think uh, I think it's a it's a decent choice. Uh, Black of course can play e6 or you can play g6, and you will in general put your knight here and your bishop here, um, and just getting ready to castle queen siding. We're go we're going for the attack. So this is uh, is the Karakan for all the wild players. Just f3. Okay, what's left? We played uh, c6, we played c5, played e6, we played e5. And there's, of course, something like the modern or uh, the the perk, uh, which are very related. And I, I would recommend um, that you go with the Austrian attack. And you do that against both uh, of these things. This is a, a good move, f4. Um, there's a lot of theory, and you should probably look it up uh, if you play against players who play the perk or the modern probably know some theory because uh, it, it it's not something you you make make up for yourself to to not uh, take a stake in the center uh, in the beginning but it is of course playable and and you will have to look at it but here in general white's plan is to go f4 and um, knight here bishop here and castle and attack on the king side and uh, and i think white scores pretty well often you sometimes you can even try and blast him away with h e5 and h4 so and you do the same against g6 you just do like this and f4 and um well this looks pretty good if if c5 you always take and just go on with the development of the pieces. Then we have one uh, provocative move. It's not provocative anymore. It's it's well known since the 30s, but it's called a uh, defense. And um, and I would again recommend that you say, okay, I'm not here to play boring draws. I'm here to mate my opponent. So I will play uh, the four pounds attack and. And again, uh, you you have to be a little bit careful. Your your center is shaky, but there will black is not having much space, and there is decent chance of uh, getting an attack against his king. Uh, again, look at the theory. Uh, this is is I think white is uh, is getting a slight advantage in this 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 variation. So it's not a bad choice. It's not unsound. But like you could say that the game in the the two knights was maybe a little bit unsound. This is just fine, and you can play this. Um, then there's the Scandinavian, and I would say, okay, this is, um, hmm. Uh, and here, black can play knight f6 or take with the queen. Knight f6, uh, I would probably recommend something like check, and this is the main line, and you, you do something. And here, uh, you just develop your pieces. Uh, I think all oh, this is fine. And a good move is, is like a3 here and c4. Um, I think this is the main line uh, in this. Uh, and, and I think like why this is slightly better, better here. By, by the way, notice that a move that you would like to play, like something like this uh, with, with this idea, runs into this move. And uh, after this move, the bishop is trapped. So this should be avoided. Anyway, this was just a random line. I think it's the main line against knight f6. The main move is, of course, this. And in general, I'll say, yeah, attack the queen. You can't prevent this. He's got his structure, but he's, he's using some time with the queen. I think queen a5 is still the main line. It can also go to d6 and also go to d8. And someone even gives a check on e6. Um, and here, just play normal move. Uh, I would say some like this, and a knight here, and queen here, and oops. Uh, 
uh, so I will do something like this. And bishop, it should be the bishop here. Um, something like that is is just fine. Uh, this square is where all the plays around. You will have to look at this, uh, but it's it's not it's not very threatening uh, for for white at all. It's it is a bit annoying because black is is even though white is considered to be better, uh, black is forcing his kind of play on white, which is a bit annoying. You, when you are white, you would like to dictate what's going to happen, and this is not really possible in the Scandinavian. Uh, and, I, and this sort of uh, concludes uh, our uh, journey uh, in uh, the wild repertoire, uh, trying to get an attack, uh, sacrificing pawns, getting pieces out quickly. It's, now we'll go on to look at a more um, simple uh, or re, re, sort of solid uh, way of playing, saying that, okay, I don't, and, and this is, if you know yourself and you know, I don't like to sacrifice pawns, you lose the end game. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, then it's it's uh, it's uh, probably a good idea to say, okay, maybe I, sh I would like to get all my pieces out first, then we can play. Uh, so this is uh, the repertoire now here is, is aimed at this. After e4, e5, I can rent uh, this move and um, and follow up with uh, g3 and bishop d2 and in, in general put the knight on e2 castle and play uh, d3 and f4 and this is what we're going to do against a lot we say sample line could be something like uh, like this here black has the option of going d5 uh, you take take and um, well i think something like this is is the main line and this position is just interesting uh, White has gotten a little bit overweight in the center, a very strong bishop here. Black has a good, uh, solid structure, no weaknesses. This is, uh, well, I think it's balanced, but white does have some attacking chances. And there's no way white is going to be swept off the board. So you get a game, you get, you get to castle at least, for sure. Uh, this is unpreventable, more or less, unless you want to sacrifice something. And so another way of playing is uh, after this is to just go knight c6, bishop d2, bishop c5, and here for instance you can go like this. Um, and and why and and white's plan is simply to play uh, something like yeah we'll just put and maybe something like this I don't know and um, and here and with the idea to go f4 uh, and and get an attack on. Oh, Black's king get some some space over there. Um, this is uh, it's a fine line for for white, and it's easy to play. It's easy to learn. Uh, you might even sometimes play knight a4, bishop c5, and and if you look at some games with with this, you will realize it's, it's you can learn this pretty quickly. Quickly, it's what we call system chess. Uh, it's it's not difficult to learn. So this is a very easy, simple setup. It even works against the Petrov, because you, you just don't allow it. Okay, what about e6? Here I would say that uh, the King's Indian attack is, is is a good idea. You just go here, and your next moves is going to be like um, knight f3, d3, bishop d2, castle, and uh, then rook e1. Uh, the main line, if you're just going to look, is is something like uh, like this, I think. E5, and here you can take, but the most common way of playing is, is something like here, and I think something like this. And basically, black is playing on the queen side, and white is playing on the king side. Uh, he's going to push his pawn. He might put a knight on d5. He might get this knight to d4. Sometimes he tried to push the pawn all the way up to h6, weaken the dark squares. And in general, it's it, white does get a strong attack. Uh, if black is really really well prepared in this line, he might be able to to withhold uh, this. I think on on a level up till grandmaster, it's very very difficult to be black in these positions. Uh, so so I would definitely recommend this for. There's of course a lot of uh, different ways for black to play, but uh, but in general this is is sort of uh, easy to to get get going. Uh, that was the French. Let's see, the Sicilian. 
Yeah, and here I was simply, I was simply, we looked at before, look, we had the while, we played f4, here we just go g3 uh, and, and bishop d2 and d3 and so on. Uh, and a line could be something like this. And here I think this move is, is, is a bit interesting. Um, it's, it's not so bad. Uh, in general, white will just uh, castle uh, kingside and move the f pawn. Um, and, and try and attack black's king. Black will in general play something like this and move the pawns. Uh, this leads to uh, interesting strategic play and if you're sort of like that then you would be comfortable in this I think. Uh, it, real experts uh, tend to do very well with white in this uh, and but in, in general I think Black has found ways to, to, to neutralize most of white's ideas uh, but it's Definitely playable, and uh, and if you're just looking to get a, uh, an interesting strategic games against the Sicilian, this is an easy way to to do it without having a lot of tactics uh, going on, which is sort of what we're trying to avoid here. Okay, and uh, there is c6, and what we do is we do the same. We just go with the king's Indian attack. Um, This is, the, I think, the main line. And here uh, you can actually play d4 is interesting. Um, I think uh, Tiv Yakov says it's good for white in some, some video. Uh, you can find it online. But you could also just play like this and playing uh, sort of Pirk uh, where you have good pieces. You It's easy to play. You get your bishop out. You get the rook in here. You get counterplay against black's uh, center in general. Things. And it, it's very finely aligned with, with playing the close Sicilian and uh, the King's Indian attack against the French. So this, this is an easy way to play. There's no nasty tactics coming. There's nothing you have to remember. You just put your piece, get your pieces out. Okay. Um, and, here, and here you can actually do the same. You can just play d3. And behind bishop d2 and uh, and put your knight on e2 castle and play f4 and and there's nothing black can do about that and you can also do the same against g6 if you're more ambitious you you use a setup with d4 uh, and I think th that setup is rather good uh, I played in, but mostly with black uh, against knight f3 and d3 uh, but but it's been it's more demanding so if you just say okay I'm just gonna play the same th things so I'm just gonna play d3 like this, put my bishop here, my knight here maybe, or maybe here, or maybe I'll play f4 and knight on f3, and in general I'll have an, an easy to play position. Uh, this is is not very very, uh, yeah, of course not. It's not threatening, but it's it's an uh, it's an easy way to get an interesting game. It for sure will be a heavyweight strategic battle in the middle game. And you will start with a rather relatively safe king and, and no wild tactics going on. Then there's knight f6. And I think, uh, yeah, you here there's no way around it. You you will simply have, because d, d3 is simply too passive there. You have not gotten any concession with c6 or e6. Uh, the same goes for, of course, the Scandinavian. And here I would recommend for the positional player just to go knight f3. And... Uh, and you will have to learn the theory. There is a, there is a three main options. There is bishop d4. Uh, there is a, there's one option. There's take, and then there's take. And and these are roughly equal merit. Uh, it's not scary and it's not bad. And it's but white should count on a slight advantage for due to a little bit more space. By the way, I've had a few games with the Aliechen defense for white on this uh, DM talks. So just take a look at those, right? Okay, uh, D5. Yeah, and here I would recommend, well, okay, we didn't get quite the setup we wanted, but we can still go D3 um, and, and play Bishop D2 and, and get a, a, an easy position to play. You'll just play something like, uh, like this. Oops, that was a, a long night move. Uh, so we'll just make it like here and castle and 
and black is and, and probably you just put your pawn on d3 and, and you only have good pieces you don't have an advantage but uh, you'll get a, 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 a strategic interesting game where there's a lot to fight about uh, and and you're not getting hurt in the opening which is also something when you're starting out or not ex an experienced players getting hurt in the opening is very common uh, it's just sort of hard to survive uh, with, when, when you don't know all these things that players who have played for a long time knows. Uh, so this concludes uh, sort of uh, an uh, idea for a wild repertoire for white and an idea for a wild repertoire for black. There is not much concrete stuff here, it's just an uh, sort of a, a few ideas on, on what you can play, uh, but it's also based on that if you want a strategic game, you, you can get that, and if you want a wild game, you can get that. Um, and this was GM Talks. Remember to subscribe if you like this video, or recommend it to someone else, or even share it. Uh, thank you for watching.